Hi, this is Simon Candlish and welcome to another marvellous video. Many exotic animals once existed in the land of Middle-earth, long until twilight pushed them to the spotlight of the contemporary culture. Books and films about werewolves and vampires are amongst the most prominent and sought-after themes in modern society. From early depictions of the battle between these two formidable otherworldly creatures, such as Buffy the Vampire Slayer during the year 1997 and Underworld in the year 2003, to the famed twilight Twilight Saga, which spawned programs such as The Vampire Diaries, Teen Wolf, and Shadow Hunters. Incidentally enough, quite a few fans are not aware that the famous depictions of these monstrous animals are frequently linked to Tolkien's novels. Of course, there are also a few works that have been written prior to Tolkien's tech that helped to conjure up or even briefly touched on these mysterious beings. The almost abundantly prominent being vampire novels such as Bram Stoker's famous book named Dracula, William Polidori's The Vampire, and also Lee Fanu's Carmilla, and fictions which include Wagner the Werewolf, which was written by George Reynolds, as well as the type of wolves who frequently appear in forest areas of the 18th century fairy tales. However, many people seem to believe that indeed Tolkien was among the first writers to incorporate these creatures as foundational beings in creation within the arc of a larger story. Instead of the story focusing on the living beings within the story, discovering that these creatures were real and the tale tends to revolve around that premise. Werewolves exist in the texts that detail the Lord of the Rings mythos. However, they were never shown in the films. Iru Iluvatar established Valinor as well as Middle-earth before the very first age in the universe of J.R.R. Tolkien's books. The Lord of the Rings, and everything was flawless. The primordial creatures known as the Valar, their strong spirits named the Maiar, notably Saruman and Gandalf, and the Elves were among the other creations of ultimate deity. All good things, however, appear to come to an end when Morgoth, a Valar, turns against the others in a desire for more power. He twisted many of Eru's creatures to darkness, giving life to a number of Middle-earth's most famous creatures, from orcs to Bal rocks to trolls and yes even werewolves in his quest to subdue all before we go on to our explanation we have a very small request if you like our content then please support us by subscribing to our channel this is a small click for you but for us it means a lot thank you and let's begin <laughs> Werewolves, the origins of the loyal servants of Sauron. Werewolves were originally made to be Sauron's minions, created from wolves and haunted by dreadful souls that their lord had been imprisoned within their bodies. Werewolves inhabited Tol Sirion, which became known by the name Tolingoroth, which means Isle of Werewolves. These fell animals, also known as wolves, possessed by evil souls, imprisoned by Sauron inside their bodies. In Tolkien's realm, it was these very spirits that distinguished regular wolves from werewolves. Werewolves were formed or at least perverted from another form by none other than Sauron, their lord, and who at least once assumed the form of a gigantic wolf himself. According to the Grey Annals, the creature that moved in wolf shapes arrived in Beleriand during the Valian year of 1330. Although they did not appear in the known and written records of the land of Arda throughout the second and even in the Third Age, Gandalf identified werewolves as being one of the creatures among Sauron's minions in the later parts of the Third Age, along with the trolls, orcs, wargs, and even the wraiths. Morgoth created orcs, balrogs, and trolls to combat the Valar. There seemed to be, however, another heinous creature created by Sauron, the werewolves. Morgoth perverted the wolves and the dogs of Middle-earth with the aid of Sauron by impressing evil spirits inside their bodies. There were two notable werewolves at the command of the Dark Lord, in the Lord of the Rings legends, Karkaroth and Drathluin. Drathluin was very first werewolf created by the Dark Lord Morgoth, and as such he was the father of all other werewolves in Middle-earth. At the time of the First Age of the Land of Arda, he lived in Tolingoroth, which is literally translated to Isle of Werewolves, alongside his Lord Sauron. Drathluin was killed by Huan, who was a Hound of Valinor, at the time of the quest for the Silmaril. After that, Sauron assumed the appearance of a wolf, but he was vanquished by Luthien and Juan, and lost possession of this citadel. Morgoth then determined that he needed to develop a werewolf fierce enough to 
destroy Juan. So the first Dark Lord then went on to create the beast named Karkaroth, fed him to the meat of men and elves, and entrusted the monster with guarding the majestic gates of Angband. Karkaroth and Juan were both gravely wounded in a struggle between the two, therefore concluding the life of Middle-earth's most famous werewolf, Drachluin, was the father of all werewolves, and his descendant, Karkaroth, the protector of Angband, was the deadliest werewolf after his sire. The complete form and shape of all the fierce werewolves was created by the Dark Lord Sauron, who was also their lord and sole creator, who once took on the appearance of a giant wolf himself. After Morgoth's lieutenant drove away all the Nolder from the wizard tower, or Tolsilion, he then converted the Isle Citadel into his home, and all of the werewolves following him in his wake. After word of Beren's courageous actions reached Morgoth, he set a heavy price on him and his head, having Sauron leading a legion of werewolves, orcs, and other evil monsters on his tail. At the time of the journey for the Silmaril, the Dark Lord Sauron captured Finrod, Beren, and their new crewmates as they tried to circumvent his own watchtower and threw them into his prison to compel them into disclosing their identities and intent. The disreputed Maya dispatched a werewolf in order to gobble up the detainees, one after the other, in front of their frightened peers. Finrod perished as a result of the wounds he received when struggling with one of the werewolves in order to rescue Beren. The remainder of Sauron's servants were slain by Luthien and Huan, while their lord relented and made his way into the trees of Tor Nufuan. Werewolves were still one of Sauron's underlings by the Third Age. Gandalf made a mention of them in a discussion with a hobbit named Frodo Baggins following the occurrences at the location of the majestic fort of Bruinen, along with the wraiths, orcs and wargs, as obeying the desires of the wicked Dark Lord. Presence of the werewolves in Tolkien's lore. Oh, werewolves, witches, and vampires. J.R.R. Tolkien was just not afraid of the animals of the night. On the contrary, he seemed to like composing and conjured up horror stories. Fairies, wizards, orcs, and quests spring to mind when we ever think of The Hobbit and even Lord of the Rings. But in his lengthy attempt to build an all-encompassing mythology for Britain, the professor conjured stories inside stories. Middle-earth feels genuine because Tolkien detailed its past through a number of these historical allusions are simply touched upon in the major storylines. Tolkien detailed many of them in depth. Luthien and Beren are famous characters from J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth. Luthien is an elf who is the daughter of Melian and Thingol. Beren is a human being and complex stories of their love and the journey they are forced to undertake, triumphing against impossible odds but ending in disaster, makes its appearance in the, the Silmarillion, the symphonic poem named The Lady of Lethian, and also the Grey Annals segment of The War of the Jewels, as well as other legendarium writings blended into the book written in 2017 named Beren and Luthien where it plays an important role. Aragorn tells Frodo their story in The Lord of the Rings. Tolkien's The Legend of Aragorn and Arwen mirrors the narrative of Luthien and Beren, an aidless elf maiden marrying a mere mortal and choosing humanity for herself. Tolkien and even his wife Edith's gravestones have the names Luthien and Beren. Luthien and Beren appear to be a fable about star-crossed lovers in its tale of love and fidelity, but can also be seen as a horror story. Beren saw Luthien dancing in his father's forest beneath the moonlight and fell head over heels in love with her since she was one of the most gorgeous of men and elves. He lingered in the shadows, hoping to be close to Luthien and hold her, but Dayron, who was her longtime friend and music and dancing partner, spied on Beren and called for Luthien to escape, assuming him to be a dangerous beast. She fled when she noticed Beren's shadow. Beren stroked her arm as she concealed herself in the trees. Luthien fled in terror, convinced that an animal was pursuing her inside the woods. Luthien was twirling on a grassy hill, bordered by hemlock one summer's day, when she sang, waking Beren from his reverie. He raced to her, and she tried to flee once again, so he yelled, Tinuvale, or Nightingale. Then Luthien saw him for the very first time. She fell in love with him. He gave her a kiss on the lips, but she moved away, and he dozed off. In his hour of sorrow, she reappeared before him and placed her hand in his, and held his head on her breast in the Hidden Kingdom. They began meeting in secret from then on. Dayron, who loved her as well, told her 
father about the encounters with Beren. Despite Melian's warnings, Thingol was adamant that Beren would not marry his child and set an apparently impossible job as the marriage price, that Beren had to give him one of Morgoth's iron crown Silmarils. Thingol did not execute Beren outright because he had assured Luthien that he was going to protect Beren's life. Luthien was given a vision of her lover, Beren suffering in the Lord of the Wolves' horrible depths, and her heart was filled with her horror. She sought the advice of her mother, who informed her how Beren was imprisoned in the prisons of Sauron, who was then the Dark Lord's terrible lieutenant. Luthien made the decision to help Beren. She approached Daeron for assistance, but he sold her out to Thingol. Thingol later had her secured in the upper branches of a massive beech tree. Daeron was overcome with regret for his crimes, and Luthien pardoned him and created a plot to escape. Luthien used her magical skill to enchant her tresses in a cloak, lulling her captors to sleep, and fled her confinement. On her route to save Beren, she encountered Juan, who was the Hound of Valinor, and then was led to his master, Selegorm. He offered to aid her, inviting her to accompany him to Nargothron in order to coerce her to marry him. Selegorm held her captive and banned her from speaking to anybody else. Juan, betraying his lord, felt sorry for her and set her to go. Juan was given the ability to talk, and the two of them managed to flee Nargothrond together. They arrived at Sauron's Isle, and Luthien sang a song to Beren. He replied, assuming it was his imagination. When Sauron hearing her singing, he set out to capture her and dispatched hound after hound to kill Juan but Juan slaughtering them one after the other. Sauron finally changed himself to become the deadliest among all werewolves and left. Luthien buried Sauron's attack in the fabric of a charmed robe, causing Juan to recoil. Sauron appeared in several forms, but Juan defeated him. Luthien ordered the vanquished Sauron to hand up the keys to his fortress before fleeing in the form of a vampire. Luthien demolished a tower and liberated its inmates. When she found Beren, she assumed that he was dead and fell alongside him in sadness. But because of the rise son, he awakened, and they were once again reunited. Juan then went back to Selagorm. Beren begged Luthien to take her back to her father, however she refused. Curifin and Selagorm arrived as they were ready to embrace, banished due to Luthien's escape from Nargothrond. They battled Beren for vengeance, and Juan once again fought on Luthien's side. Beren overcame them at Luthien's plea to spare their lives. The couple fled when Beren seized one of their horses. He travelled to Angband to pick up the Silmaril while she slept. Juan and Luthien camouflaged themselves as Thuring Wethil. Morgoth's vampire servant, and Draugluin, the werewolf, when they found Beren had departed. She tracked out Beren and decided to join him on his journey. Beren and Luthien arrived at Morgoth's throne tower together, but the wicked Dark Lord saw through Luthien's disguise. She came up and volunteered to perform for Morgoth. He accepted, filled with vile passion, hoping to play with her, but then she put him as well as the whole court to sleep. Beren was awoken, and he broke off a Cimmeril from the crown of Morgoth. When he reached for yet another Cimmeril, his sword splintered, hitting Morgoth in the cheek. Luthien and Beren ran to the gates, where they were sailed by Cartharoth, the fiercest of all Morgoth's werewolves, and also the gatekeeper. Beren threw the Cimmeril towards the face of the wolf, but the wolf chewed Beren's hand off and consumed it along with the Silmaril. With the Dendians of Angbang awoke, Luthien drank out the poison and attempted to restore Beren with her dwindling might. When everything looked hopeless, the Grand Eagles of Manwe appeared at Juan's summoning and took them to Doriath. Luthien sat by Beren's side, healing him. They then arrived and stood before Luthien's father's throne. Beren informed Thingol that the mission had been completed and that he was holding a Silmaril. Beren revealed Thingol his stump when he requested it. The pair proceeded to explain what had occurred. On that day, they were married in front of Thingol's throne. Meanwhile, Karkaroth massacred all living beings he encountered in his mad flight, feeling both powerful and tortured by the gem searing his gut. Thingol, Beren, Juan, and the rest of the elves set out to destroy the beast. Beren was mauled by the wolf, and Juan rushed to his help, killing the beast but dying shortly after from his wounds. Beren was taken to Doriath, wherein he perished in the arms of Luthien. Luthien died in sadness, passing towards the halls of Mandos and to the Lord of the Dead. There she performed the finest song ever sung by the sorrows and sufferings of both the elves and men before Mandos' kingdom. 
It was so moving that Mandos was brought to tears for the very first time. He called Beren from the mansion of the deceased and Luthien's ghost met him on the seashore. Mandos conferred with Arda's king, who was named Manwi. Manwi couldn't change men's fate, so he offered Luthien two options, to dwell in the immortal kingdom of Valinor, where she might forget all of her sadness and enjoy perpetual bliss among her people as well as the Valar. However, without Beren, or to return to Middle-earth as a mere mortal herself, embracing doom of men. She chose death, abandoning all for Beren. Luthien and Beren shared an Osirian's home until the fall of Menigroth. Their home was named the Dor Fern Iguinar, which translates as Land of the Living Dead. They later had a son, Dior, who was Thingol's successor. Many years after this, Thingol acquired the Norglamir through Hurin, who had found it in the remains of Nargothrond. Following Glaurung the Dragon's departure, Thingol planned to bring together the finest achievements of the Elves and Dwarves, the Naglamir as well as the Silmaril, and engage Nogra Dwarfsmiths to do so. Thingol was then assassinated by dwarves, who looted his coffers and stole the Norglamir. Beren and his band of green Ents and Elves ambushed the re-entering dwarf army. Beren regained control of the Norglamir, but Luthien retained the neck piece and the big gem for the rest of her life. This accelerated Beren and Luthien's demise, for her beauty, heightened by the gem, was too radiant for human lands to bear. Elrond and Arwen were both descendants from Luthien, as was Aragorn, who was descendant from Elrond's brother Elros. In their other appearance, werewolves and undead beings in Middle-earth role-playing are either born from wolves or walks. They cannot turn into men, but they can change shape to be able to stand erect while remaining wolf-like. Werewolves in the Lord of the Rings role-playing game can switch between man form, which made them hairy, muscular people, and walk form, in which they surpass the form and ferocity of even the largest of the wargs. Werewolves also appear in the lore of the Lord of the Rings in the Battle of Middle-earth 2, in the rise of Witch King as the enormous Shade of the Wolf, a monster that Angmar faction may summon. Druthluin, ruler and protagonator of all the werewolves of the land of Angbang, and fearsome beasts ancient in evil, his strength was immense. Is the sole werewolf who is properly even a werewolf and designated as such. In some verses of Tolkien's text, he's described as pale blue with a long tail. Sauron also assumed the appearance of a werewolf that was greater than even Druthluin, and he's so hideous that just seeing him made Luthien faint. Cartharoth, also known by the name the Anfaglir, possessed a crimson mouth, as the elvish title suggests. He is considered to be a wolf, but because he is a Droth Lewin's child, he is also a werewolf, the deadliest and most terrifying ever, tougher than even Drug Lewin and Sauron. There also is the werewolf who devours Finrod and Beren's companions, as well as the Hounds of Sauron, who could have been a werewolf and attacked the Fellowship. Other werewolves were wolves whose forms were granted to evil spirits like the Dark Lord Morgoth. As a result, they weren't really men and could not acquire human form. They were corrupted angels with the forms of monstrous wolves. There also were wargs as well as werewolves in Tolkien's vast lore. Wargs could not change their appearance. They were monstrous wicked wolves. They first appeared significantly in The Hobbit, trapping Bilbo, Gandalf, Thorin, and others in towering trees, and had burnt in a forest fire created by the powerful Gandalf himself, until they were rescued by the eagles. They subsequently emerged as orcs' allies during the War of the Five Armies, which pitted orcs and wargs against dwarfs, elves, and mankind on one side. Wargs were first featured in The Law of the Lord of the Rings as malevolent assailants on the Fellowship, even before they arrived in Moria, and then once more against the Rohirrim during the War of Helps Deep. These wargs served Sauron. A personal name was never given to a warg. <laughs> Are the wolves shown in the Rings of Power actually werewolves? Werewolves did not appear in the Lord of the Rings movie, but wolves and wargs did. Morgoth's schemes took place during the very first age of the land of Middle-earth, and the majority of his subordinates were killed or imprisoned at the time of the War of Powers. Some of them, though, escaped capture. Notably, Sauron lingered in many forms until the conclusion of the world's Third Age, after which Frodo obliterated his own ring of power. Werewolves were referenced by Gandalf as one of the Dark Lord's minions, although the monsters were not mentioned in Arda's written chronicles beyond the First Age. While they may have been concealed someplace by Sauron, he was known as the Lord of the Werewolves. Therefore, it stands to reason that if any still lived in Middle-earth during the War of the Ring, he would have summoned them. The 
Amazon show is set during the Second Age, which started with Morgoth's defeat in the Battle of the Powers. Throughout this Lord of the Rings series, wolves are on the prowl. In the Rings of Power, however, the wolves of Middle-earth could be more than ordinary beasts. Nori Brandyfoot, as well as a group of many other Harfoot, almost come face to face with one of these wild monsters in a fruit field, but they are saved by a warning track. However, the track is huge, and when we spot the wolf, it appears that something larger is at work. When wolves pursue the Harfoots while they move through a dark woodland, we experience the same sensation. Werewolves, as well as wargs, are two wolf-like animals in the setting of the Lord of the Rings. Werewolves are wolves that Sauron created for wickedness, according to Middle-earth legend. Sauron trapped an evil spirit in each wolf, resulting in a new type of beast. We understand this wolf is different now that we've encountered a warg. So, we're back to banking on this being a werewolf in the Rings of Power. Difference between werewolves in Tolkien's lore and the usual werewolves in fiction. Unlike other werewolves in literature, humans did not turn from man to beast at twilight, and their conduct was not influenced by the moon. As a result, Arda's werewolves were never shapeshifters and always took the appearance of massive creatures. They were comparable to wolves and later wargs, but they were as intellectual as man, allowing them to negotiate and communicate with others. Karkaroth possessed a poisonous bite. It is uncertain if this was a typical attribute of the breed or if it was connection to the role of the werewolf prophesied to kill Juan. Why are the werewolves of Middle-earth so dangerous? Many wolves are slaughtered by the Fellowship, and they aren't considered as much of a threat as the Balrog. Thus, it's probable that many of the super wolves in the myths are actual werewolves or Maya. While not all of the Maya are similarly formidable, it's difficult to picture swarms of them being no more of a threat than orcs. However, it would be a significantly reduce the awe impact of Gandalf as well as the Balrog. According to canon, some Maya were captivated by the thrills and also the highs and adrenaline rushes that come with a bestial existence and adopted the appearance of wolves. These may have been largely or entirely Anur with the choir of Yavanna, who was the mother of life. In the same manner, as Balrogs initially accompanied Sauron, Owl, and Melkor. Those werewolves were brilliant, but they were so full of life that they didn't utilize their brains much, preferring to spend the time dashing around the forest, scaring other animals, killing, eating, and mating for the sheer fun of it. When these creatures mated with normal wolves, who are Yavanna's progeny, and supported the natural balance, wargs were born. Wargs are beasts, not demons. However, their demonic ancestors provide them with human-like intelligence and an insatiable fondness for cruelty. Despite the fact that they aren't as huge or lethal as actual werewolves, lesser clans of wicked wolves are created when their devilish blood waters down throughout their generations, with these features lessened but still present. This is consistent with how the hereditary specialization work in Tolkien's texts, and how things typically soften with time, such as Numerian Orients. <laughs> Conclusion. Werewolves in the Lord of the Rings do not resemble humans and cannot change shape. We can assume that werewolves are Maya from the words in the Lay of Lotharion. Fierce, hunger-haunted band he had, which in wolvish shape and flesh were dressed. Yet demon spirits terrible did exist. This is improbable given the numerous references to being Droglion's ancestors and the pack implying that they have been bred since it's hard to increase the number of Maya. As a result, we believe that Droglion was a feeble Maya who, with Morgoth's assistance, dressed himself in the form of a big wolf and interacted with wolves to create mighty Morgoth minions. They might also be large wolves who have been raised and taught to be clever and malevolent. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.